the reality is about March of last year, we started really seeing a turnaround. Uh, booking volume started to increase. Yields started to stabilize. And clearly now yields are starting to, to come back. Uh, when, we, uh, when we made our, our uh, fourth quarter earnings call, we did say that yields for next year, uh, we thought for the year would be flat. But that was really first half of the year being down and second half being a reversal. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and to, to accomplish that, you would have had to have started to see the reversal because we have long lead times in our booking patterns. Exactly. So we're, we're encouraged. Uh, the uh, volumes are, are very strong and, uh, and yields are improving. With um, the economy the way it is, with fuel rising despite that, it makes our job more difficult to do a deal with shipyards that make economic sense for us. Yeah. And it puts a lot of pressure on us and the yard to come up with a price that works. And yeah. so we have been working very hard to, to do that. And I th- like I said, I think we're close. We did do a deal for, for Carnival Cruise Lines last month uh, at, a, at a very attractive price. Um, and I think, I think, as I said, I think we're close with Princess. Mm-hmm. And hopefully we'll have something to announce relatively soon. What sort of size of ship are you considering? It will be... Um, in the, let's say, in the area of 130, 140, okay. uh, 1,700, 1,800 uh, cabins, um, a bit larger than, than Ruby Princess. Well, this year we're bringing on Azura, which is uh, very similar to the Ventura that would be brought on last year or two years ago already. Time flies when you're having fun. Uh, Queen Elizabeth in the fall. Uh, so uh, we'll obviously be very visible in this market. Uh, this year with uh, events both in the spring and fall in Southampton. Um, Clearly, uh, the UK is a critical market for us. Uh, Like I said before, we have two of the the most powerful brands in the UK, uh, and we're going to want to leverage that. Princess also does very, very well in the UK. And really, all our brands, to some degree or another, market in the UK, as does most of our competitors. Uh, so it's a market that, that brings uh, very significant numbers of passengers, and whether it's cruises in the you know, Middle East, like Dubai, or cruises in the Caribbean. Uh, passengers from the UK are a very important element to all of that. India is a potentially uh, good market for cruising down the road. P&O brand actually would be a very good brand to consider for India, as it's very, very well known and established in India. India and, and at the point that that, uh, that we look to that market, I think P&O would be a front runner to do that. We went through a whole process in China um, of how would we proceed and what brand would we use to proceed, what brand would lead the way. Um, did a lot of market research and, and, and after a couple of years of study, moved in with Costa. Uh, and Pierre Foskey, who runs our Costa uh, brand, has done an excellent job of introducing the, the Costa brand. We haven't we haven't gotten there yet in, in India. I, I was just saying off the top of my head, okay. knowing the, the the strength of the brand in India, that it would be a logical choice. Yeah. Okay. But how we do it, when we do it, where we do it, yeah. um, there has been a couple of attempts. Star has attempted. Lewis has attempted. In fact, I think Lewis just attempted and withdrew already. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it, the market may not be ready yet. But you know, five years down the road. Uh, I wouldn't be at all surprised that it becomes ready. And, and at that point, I think we've got, we've got a brand and brands that, that can work. And we've got brands that can work everywhere in the world. It's clear that, that, that uh, travel agents continue to be our primary source of distribution. Uh, they are our partners in this business uh, here in the UK. Uh, but they and us have to learn to adapt to um, the new forms of communication. And whether that's the internet, whether that's uh, Facebook and MySpace and iPhones and you know iPads, but the reality is that, that all the social networking that's going on, all the information that's available, uh, really makes distribution uh, different than it was 10 or 15 years ago. And I think agents that don't embrace the new technology will suffer and have a tough time. Uh, those that embrace it and use it to their advantage, I think, will prosper. Um, and we have to be very aware of that, and we have to be on the leading edge of all that. And, uh, and hopefully we've got some young people in our organization that can do that. It's critically important because when I started in the business, people got their information about cruises 
from two places, Sunday travel sections and travel agents. Mm -hmm. And that was basically it. Today, they're getting it from the Internet primarily. Um, and we have to be aware of it, and we have to continue to invest. Last year, when, when people were hearing all these horror stories about you know, another Great Depression, a lot of people postponed primarily, I think, deferred vacation or de holiday decisions. Uh, I'm hopeful that most of those people are coming back into the market now because uh, most people feel they're entitled, especially if they have a job. Obviously, if they don't have a job, things may be different. But the vast majority, thankfully, are still working. And, and I think with today's stresses, they feel entitled to, to take their holidays. And, and so those people that, that deferred as they come back into the marketplace... Um, clearly will push yields up. And, and so I've been saying already for months now that, that you know, cruise vacation pricing uh, is about as low as it's going to get. And those that want a great bargain should be booking it now because it's not going to get any cheaper. And I, I really believe that that's true. I take nothing away from Oasis, but I, I do think it gives a, uh, a different experience than we're trying to, most of our brands are trying to deliver. Uh, it is a very mall-like experience. Um, I had a letter from, from a passenger who regularly cruised Carnival Cruise Lines who sailed with Oasis. Uh, it was, this was actually a Belgian passenger, which is unusual because we don't have a lot of Belgian passengers. But they, they wrote me and, and, and said that, that uh, while they had a very nice time, um, they, they don't go on cruises to walk through a park. <laughs> They'll go through to a city to walk through a park. And so it's a different kind of experience, and it's... I, I, I liken it to Mall of the Americas. You know, Mall of the Americas is gigantic. It had all sorts of features and attracts millions and millions and millions of people. And that's great. And Oasis will attract a lot of people. But it's not what we do. And, and we're not going to try to emulate what they do. We're going to try to do what we do and keep doing it better.